The Aklanon people are part of the wider Visayan ethnolinguistic group, who constitute the largest Filipino ethnolinguistic group. Area Aklanon form the majority in the province of Aklan in Panay. They are also found in other Panay provinces such as Iloilo, Antique, and Capiz, as well as Remblan. Like the other Visayans, Aklanons have also found their way to Metro Manila, Mindanao, and even the United States. History The Aklanons are descendants of the Austronesian-speaking immigrants who came to the Philippines during the Iron Age. They got their name from the River Akayan, which means where there is boiling or frothing. Manoro it Akayan Aklan, originally known as Manoro Itacayan, is considered to be the second oldest province in the country and is believed to have been established as early as 1213 by settlers from Borneo. According to the tales of the Maragdas, Aklan once enjoyed primacy among the realms carved out in Panay by the ten Bornean Datus. These Datus, after fleeing the tyranny of Raja Makadana of Borneo, purchased the island from the Ati king Marikudo. They then established the Saka, states, of Hamtic, Achaean, which includes the Capiz area, and Iron Iron, cultivated the land, and renamed the new nation as the Confederation of Madya as Madjas. The Datus supposedly landed in Malandog, Hamtic, where a marker commemorates the event which is reenacted in the Banirayan, literally, place where the boats landed, festival. Tradition holds that the first ruler of Aklan was Datu Dinagandan who was dethroned in 1399, by Kalantia. In 1433, Kalantia III formulated a set of laws that is known today as the Code of Kalantia. William Henry Scott, a well-known American historian, later debunked the Code of Kalantia as a fraud. However, many Filipinos, including Aklanons and other Visayans continue to believe this legend is true. The capital of Achaean changed several times. Towards the end of the 14th century, Datu Dinagandan moved the capital from the present Bataan, which was captured in 1399 by Chinese adventurers under Kalantia. Kalantia established then a dynasty but it prematurely ended when his successor, Kalantia III, was slain in a duel with Datu Mandayag, the legitimate successor to Datu Dinagandan. When Mandayag became the new ruler, he moved the capital back to Bakan, ancient name of Banga, in 1437. Several Datus succeeded Mandayag and when Miguel López de Legazpi landed in Bataan in 1565, Datu Cabanyag was ruling Aklan from what is now the town of Libacao. These historical vignettes have no historical record as credible basis, but have been manufactured in such a way as to acquire a hint of historical veracity and reinforced among school children primarily through yearly programs or shows supposedly commemorating those historical events. Nonetheless, these vignettes have found no support among the established and respected historians of the Philippines, and are thus relegated as folklore of no historical provenance or significance. Spanish era during the Spanish era, Aklanons were generally peaceful and did not revolt against Spanish rule in the area. However, the situation changed when two Aklanons, Francisco del Castillo and Candido Aban, joined the Katipunan with the intention of regaining the independence of Aklan along with the rest of the Philippines. Both were successful in ridding the area of Spaniards. Present Currently, Aklanons enjoy some form of self-reliance since Aklan is now a province of the Philippines. Some Aklanons have also been active in Philippine politics, which includes Jose M. Hontiveros from Tangalan. Aklan became senator representing District of Iloilo, Capiz, and Rimblan from 1922 to 1928 and was appointed Justice of the Peace, Capiz, Capiz, 1913 to 1916, Provincial Governor of Capiz, 1916 to 1919, Auxiliary Judge, Court of First Instance, 1929 to 1931, Judge of the Court of First Instance, 19th Judicial District, 1931 to 1933, and of the 22nd Judicial 
District 1933-1934 and a delegate representing 3rd District of Capiz in the July 10, 1934 Constitutional Convention, Dr. Rafael S. Tumbocon, former Undersecretary of Heal, Godofredo P. Ramos, father of Aklan, Congressman, Governor, delegate to the 1971 Constitutional Convention and Justice of the Court of Appeals and was appointed Foreign Affairs Secretary by President Marcos replacing Carlos P. Romulo but did not materialize. WHE died of cancer before his appointment is approved. Incumbent Senator Riza Hontiveros, the grand niece of Senator Jose M. Hontiveros Alejandro Melcher, Victorino Mapa, and Cardinal Jamie Sin, who was active in the two people power revolutions. Senator Jose M. Hontiveros was never mentioned among the prominent Aklanons who has been active in politics because during his time as Senator Aklan was just the 3rd Congressional District of Capiz and so he was known to be a Capitan. But his birthplace is Tangalan, Aklan, Capiz, to Leon Hontiveros and Genoviva Miraflores on March 19, 1899. Aklanons are also known throughout the Philippines due to the location of Boracay, one of the major tourist destinations in the country. Demographics Aklanons number about 500,000. They are culturally close to the Korea and Hiligaynons. This similarity has been shown by customs, traditions, and language. Languages Aklanons speak the Aklan languages, which includes Aklanon and Malanon. Ati and Kinaraya are also spoken to some extent. Meanwhile, Hiligaynon is used as a regional language. Aklanon and Hiligaynon are spoken by Aklanons in Metro Manila, while the official languages of the Philippines, Filipino and English are taught at school. Religion Prior to the arrival of the Spaniards, the Aklanons likely practiced the worship of Anitos. However, after Spanish colonization, the majority of Aklanons have become devout Roman Catholics. They are known by their devotion to the Santo Niño or Child Jesus, as shown in the Ati Atahan Festival, but originally the Ati Atahan Festival is called Viva K Senior, Sto, Nino, and this festival has been celebrated by our forefathers according to my grandmother who was from Lazo, Aklan and during our childhood we still celebrate this as Viva K Senior, Sto, Nino. It was just in 1960 when the name of the fiesta was changed to Calibo Ati Atahan Festival. When the then mayor Federico Icamina was elected in 1959 as mayor and started inviting visitors to witness the Sto. Nino Festival and from there, Calibo Ati Atahan was born and became world famous festival in every third Sunday of January. This celebration is much more different from they had in Iloilo. Antique, Capiz, and Negros. Theirs were choreographed presentations, the Viva K Senor Santo Nino is purely merry making like Mardi Gras in praise of the Sto Nino. Anyone can join any group dancing on the streets, no one will prohibit you from dancing with their group, and in fact, they, members of the group, welcomes your joining them and too proud of it. You can see the difference, and from there, you can make your own imagination. Why there is merry making dancing on the streets in honor of the Sto Nino. What was the event for? And as far as I can remember, Dinagayang of Iloilo, Halloran of Capiz, Banirayan of Antique and Mascara of Negros was organized during martial law period already. More than a century behind the Viva K Senior, Sto, Nino. Festivals of Calibo, Makado, Ibeje and Altavas all of the province of Aklan. So this is not just Calibo, but almost a province-wide celebration in honor of the Sto. Nino and almost all this celebration are one and the same, street dancing and merry making and no choreographic presentations. The celebration of the Sto. Nino is not just in Calibo, it is also being celebrated in Mikado, Aklan in every January 15th of each year, and January 21st in Ibeje, Aklan and January 26th in Alatavas, Aklan. Aklanons also practice processions during religious holidays such as the Salubong. Culture Most Aklanons engage in agriculture while those in the coastal areas engage in fishing. 
They also make handicrafts. Music, such as courtship songs or kundiman, wedding hymns, and funeral recitals, are well developed, as it is with dance. There are still a lot of cultural dances that has never been mentioned by some historians and these dances are the ethnic dance of the minority groups in the hinterlands of Libacao, Aklan, the Barangay Rosal Bounding Tapas, Capiz and this minority group is called the Pan-Ayanon. These dances are the following, Binanog, Panagate, Inagong, Sotes, Pahid, Patadiang dance, and Nigo dance. Those were the real Kulutral, ethnic dance that historians are unaware of. As to the name given by the indigenous peoples SATFF from Iloilo who went to Libacao and organized it is not acceptable to Libacaonans. The Tribu Bukidnon. This Tribu Bukidnon never exist in the history of Libacao or Aklan in general. As far as I can remember the minority group in the hinterlands of Libacao is the pan Ayanon, who are ethnic Labakanan and pan I Tapas because formerly pan I Tapas and Libacao are both part of the province of Capiz and these are the places where their tribe used to live. They have what we called the Minoro as their seat of Govt and they have their chieftains. These tribe are warlike people having Talabong, Bangka, Esi, Terra Terra as their weapons and taming, shield made of wood as their shield, these people are so artistic. They made their own silver jewelries like earrings, necklaces as long as 5 to 6 feet made from US coin silvers and some silver ornaments to the handles of Talabong and Bangka and they have learned the art of a good silversmith and those necklaces are being used when they have celebrations and performing the ethnic dances. The other tribe is the Tagalaya who were from the barangays of Oyong and Dalagsan. The Tagalayas has no much culture to tell but only their being warlike and using the same weapons as the pan -Ayanon. These two tribes of the hinterlands of Libacao are clannish people and their main livelihood since time immemorial is the Abaca fibers. Aklan is one of the producers of Abaca in Region 6 and Libacao has almost 90% of it. Historically, Aklanons practiced tattooing, sometimes including henna, but abandoned the practice during the Spanish era. Recently, however, there has been a revival of it in Boracay Island, which is caused primarily by its popularity with tourists. They are among the Filipino ancestries that are tolerant to the Negritos, such as the ATI. Literature the Aklanons have a long tradition in literature with Maracudo as the most notable. Currently, many writers of Aklanon origin, including Melcher F. Sitchin, have been trying to introduce Aklanon literature into the mainstream. Mythology Like other Western Visayans, Aklanons are known to believe in the Aswang. Tales about these creatures are common among Aklanons and superstitions are practiced to ward against the danger brought by the Aswang. As to this aswang, which means which or maybe cannibals or maybe true or not. See also Aklanon language Aklan Visayan people Visayan languages References External links Aklanon Aklanon Literature, archived 24 October 2009 Precolonial Period of the Philippines, archived 24 October 2009 Visaya Expats. Com, Visaya Expat Forum